and and what I'm hearing is that there is uh oh there's like a a moral like an enormous moral tension that yeah. all of this brings up that and I it yes and I didn't you're absolutely right there's just this conflict because when I went back to camp so bizarre we were in these trailers and sitting right next to us um, was this perfectly good facility a medical facility sorry sorry that's okay oh my gosh don't even worry about it <laughs> there's a medical facility beside us mm. um, which could have been used as a hospital administrative site I think there's even place for there would have been room for people to be quartered there and um, it was all finished um, and I'd asked why you know why don't we use that facility sir you know we why are we sending the administrative side way over on the other side of um, Cutter or the other mm-hmm. side of the airfield it was far away displaced from the, the sort of the combat the squadron side Oh, um, the, um, so the, the, the sheik, I guess, the royal family, the member of the royal family that, that helped build or was in control of the airfield, um, told us that it's not finished and it wouldn't be right for us to stay in an unfinished building. Well, what's the building for? Well, it's a, um, It's the facility to take care of the guard dogs. And um, so I was talking to the American later about that. The American, um, I'm not sure if it was the American spy or was the American squadron. And, um, and he, um, and then he, and he told me, he says, uh, the Americans told me, they said, yeah, he says, no, that's finished. You, you, of course it's usable. It's a great facility. He says, but it would just be an insult to the rest of the Arab world if Qatar, the, you know, the, the sheik of Qatar would, or Qatar would be, would be known that he's making foreigners stay in a dog's place, in a place that's built for dogs. And, um, And then when we add like stuff like that, and we add the fact that, you know, we had to break up the squadron for political reasons. And then we add that we had these idiotic freaking general staff that would fly in to Qatar to have an, you know, and we'd have to arrange for some sort of show tour for them so that they could then, I found out later, so they could be in there long enough, just 24 hours so they could get their medal. And then we add the big one. So the big one was, um, so before we deployed, this has a, uh, before we deployed to, um, to war, as we knew we were supposed to go, but government didn't want to admit that we we're going to go. Mm-hmm. So there's no official orders for us to go. It's mm-hmm. very clear we were going to go. Yeah. So we weren't allowed to prepare. So we had to try to ad hoc repair. <laughs> And part of that ad hoc repair was we had a really, there's a really sweet administrative sh- administration officer we had. Um, but she had a tough time relating to the pilots and the urgency for getting stuff done. So I became, I became tasked with, okay, so the, um, probably the first tasking, I'm trying to think which came first, but anyway, but you know, find out about the enemy. We got to train for the enemy. Mm-hmm. Get documents. The problem is, is that the Iraqis had a lot of what's called blue uh, mm-hmm. equipment. So mm-hmm. blue sides. So that's that's allies, right? Right. French F ones. Right. Uh, right. And um, or French Mirage fighter story, and and I think they had some F ones, but any anyway, French Mirage, uh, French Exocet missiles, um, some British equipment too, um, 
And so we only kept, because 1990 was still a Cold War, just at the end of it, and we still had, all of our focus was on the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact countries. Right. So we didn't have any, um, how do we say, um, uh, detailed high security knowledge of how our equipment works. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> so, uh, so we've got to find out that. And um, so uh, before I get the details about the intelligence side, I was also tasked with um, our administration officer and the base. Uh, we can't really trust our administration officer. She's a bit overwhelmed and, you know, she has a tough time understanding what we need. So show me, we want you to take over the administration officer duties for this preparation. Wow. So, so we want you to find out what vaccines we need. We want you to get us a range for us to get money so we can have some money. We want you to help develop an escape and evasion kit. Escape and evasion kit is if the pilot bails out in enemy territory or unfriendly territory or unknown territory, a kit that will help them survive. It would consist of a map. It would consist of, um, you know, uh, might be some certain food. It would be local money, figure out what local money in the different areas where they could bail out over at Kuwait or Iraq or, or Saudi Arabia. Um, and, um, and a host of other things to prepare for that. And it was ridiculous just getting a map. Because we weren't authorized, we couldn't get authorization for the map. The absurd goes, find out the vaccines. Um, want you to arrange also a, a briefing, not just on the, but we want you to be able to brief the families. This happened a bit later as we're about to deploy. Want you to brief the families on the threat that we'll be facing. And they arranged that in the base theater. And I was one of the, the main um, features of the briefing to sort of prepare the families of what we'd face. Oh my gosh. It was really hard. And uh, so I was really overworked. And what made it really hard was um, um, to try to get the information on the, on the, um, the blue forces, which should have been just a normal thing. Put up a request from the squadron up through the wing, the base, up through to fighter group, up through to air command, goes all the way to National Defense Headquarters. Mm -hmm. National Defense Headquarters doesn't have it. They go over to Defense Intelligence Agency in the States and the Americans, and they ask them, that's their Pentagon, their military intelligence agency. They then send it back through that whole list all the way back down. Mm -hmm. So we get the request and it goes up. So I send it up to fighter group. It stops there. There was this a lot of pettiness in our military a lot of pettiness in some of these support branches that have a huge chip on their shoulder. Um, and this major, I'll use his name, but you don't have to use it in a thing, but Major Tremblay, anyway, mm. um, he calls me up. Um, and I had a, a warrant working for him. So when I first showed up, quick background, I had a warrant working for me. His name was Patty Hatfield, and he had more years in military than I had alive, and he was working for me. It was very humbling as a young officer coming into that. And I think oh. I was pretty good at, I think I was listening to me and, and I allowed him to train me. Yeah. He did, did a great job. Yeah. I outranked him immensely. Right. You know, and, yeah. and, and, um, but I never pretended to laud that over him. Yeah. And so Patty, uh, so, so just keep in mind Patty. So he was like 53 at the time or 52. Wow. And, um, this super guy, Newfoundlander, just a great guy and a uh, great sense of humor, knew how to talk to everyone. So Patty, um, uh, so anyway, I go to Major Tremblay uh, or Major Tremblay calls me up and says, what do you think? What do you think you, uh, you want with this request? I said, well, my boss has asked me to get this request. I said, uh, he says, well, why do you think you need this request? I said, well, because we're going to deploy Oh, so you have given the orders to deploy? I'm like, no, we haven't been given the orders to deploy. I said, but we're pretty sure we're going to deploy. Well, you have got to give the orders. What makes you think you have a right to this uh, intelligence? And I'm like, <laughs> well, we have to prepare even in case we don't go. Well, you think you know everything, don't you? And I'm like, no, I don't think I know everything. Well, who do you think you are working in that fighter squadron? I hear stories about you. You think you know everything? I said, no, I don't think I know everything. I, 
right? As a matter of fact, I said, that's why I'm asking you this request because I don't know everything. <laughs> I, I want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are.